Where's he going? Most likely Wednesday week at Sandown. That tannin looks like it's come down a bit. Yeah, well, put that DMSO on it and settled it. I think it was just fluid. Mm. Should be right by the time it goes back to the owners. Mm. He will go out tomorrow. It's a challenging business, there's no doubt about that. He's going to go to the paddock and have three months ahead. Yeah. Be mature a bit mentally. By the end of the day, when you've got sort of 40 horses in work and 120 odd horses on the books, there's a lot of staff, a lot of finances, and nothing sort of prepares you for putting your own sort of skin on the line, and there's just nothing for her after that. There's totally. spring, so she's going to go to the paddock for two weeks, water walk for two weeks, then come back and she can race sort of late November, December, and through then, and she's still up. And... It's a lot of hard work, but that's why the victories are terrific. When you win, you sort of you feel them much more because you have had that sort of stress along the way, and. There's bad days and there's good days, but as long as you can make the most of the good days, you can sort of cope with the bad days, because you know there's um, more success, hopefully, around the corner. One, two, three. What we do is try and train good horses and group one winners. You know, you're at Caulfield, you're against the best trainers, and to put yourself on the map at that time of year, the spring, you know, it's... There's a lot of people watching and it, that's what sort of makes or breaks you. If you can't have good horses, then not much point doing it. So I was living on um, campus at Melbourne Uni, uh, going to Newman College there, and I sort of found myself in need of a job to get through uni and pay the bills. My father had a couple of horses in work down at Flemington. First port of call was there and I went down and just started mucking out boxes and probably had a rake in my hand for about six months and wouldn't have touched a horse. Probably the best way to learn more than anything, you get a bit of experience around the horses and how they react to you and then, you know, whoever's in charge, it was Pat Cannon at the time, and Pat said, all right, you're going well enough, you can lead a horse down the track. And I thought, oh, how good's this? So I saddled up a horse and walked down the track to the rider and start doing that. And you get a bit more confidence doing that. You start washing them, you um, eventually take them to the races. And over a period of about three or four years while I was going to uni, I was just in my element down there at Flemington and loved every minute of it. It's been um, a, a pretty rapid ascension, I suppose, but it's been one that um, has been pretty well planned out every step of the way. So we're leaving now, John. Here we go. Go over and get her walking out of her box and stuff. We've got two or three really nice three-year-old fillies, but um, Leody's probably the number one seed at the moment. 11 Leoti, trained by Henry Dwyer, Chris Parnham has the right. First up today after 22 weeks off, I wouldn't be sacking her based on her debut at Mooney Valley, but it is a good sign that there's been some uh, support there. Mistopolis takes a slender lead, he's Leotti also chiming in, out wider on the track and special diva, Leotti down the outside, quickly took over and shot away. Leotti scores by a length and a half, special diva and Mistopolis. She's had two runs in this preparation, she won first up at Sale, she won a maiden then came to Caulfield and ran second in a listed race, the Cosette Stakes. Now Leotti coming up, big winner at Sale when resuming and made three winners that she comfortably defeated come out of that race since. I'm a star flying home, Leone's starting to fly too. I'm a star getting to the lead right on the wire. I'm a star in a three-way go, drives and wins from either Leone who stormed out wide. We sort of threw her in the deep end in the Quisette, just hoping she'd sort of swim rather than sink, I suppose, and she was pretty impressive. Even though she didn't win, she did all the right things. All good? Yeah, she's in good order. Fresh, but... Too fresh? Nah, happy. Happy? She can have a good. We have got fairly lofty aspirations for her. We, we'd like to take her to Sydney for the Golden Rose and then back to um, Caulfield for the Thousand Guineas Prelude and the Thousand Guineas, which is, you know, they're, they're Group 1 races and um, I think she's probably a Group 1 filly and hopefully she, she proves me right on, on Saturday. I would be um, really disappointed if she didn't win, to be honest. Just There's a couple of smart fillies in there, but this time of year you can't really go anywhere and find a weak options. coming off the track this morning and she was bouncing around and too bright so I probably should have done some evens with her in hindsight but mm. the way she relaxed last time she didn't even yeah. keep up she was off the bit and so hopefully there is a bit of tempo so she can do that again but whether you sort of lead and hope for the best and go back and risk getting beaten 
you know, racing and horses can often make fools of you and I've um, probably put more pressure on myself than anyone by sort of telling people how good I think she is and if she wins Sydney, on Saturday, we'll probably go to Sydney on the Wednesday before, so she's only up there four or five days. Come back. And then come Sydney. back and yeah, she can go to Rockman on the way back for a week and go to the water walker and even if she goes into that thousand guinea crowd without a gallop, you're still you yeah. know, you're nice and fresh, that's her gallop for the thousand guineas. We deal with loss, I've taken horses to the races before that I've thought um, you know, are very promising horses and will go well and told the owners such and they've come last. It's the nature of the beast. There's a lot of luck involved in training horses and all the hard work in the world can't counteract luck. So if she has even luck, I, I think she, you know, should be hard to beat and should probably win. I'm really, really excited about her prospects longer term, but Saturday is a really sort of, um, not a D-day by any stretch of the imagination, but it'll tell us a lot about her and we're just hoping she can naturally improve and um, learn to relax a bit as she did last time and continue that trend through and um, get out in distance. Love having winners on my home track more than anywhere. We think she'll take a power of beating. Too good. Just amazing that you get pissed at the sales, buy a horse, and you end up selling it to the Queen. of stakes racing in Melbourne towards a thousand guineas but I just don't think it suits her. She's probably looking for 1400 sooner rather than later and her pedigree probably suggests that too. We've got you know, the Golden Rose in the back of our mind, we've got races like the thousand guineas and potentially the Oaks long term. The stepping stone to those races will be the first time she gets out over 1400. I've probably made no secret of the fact I've got a pretty good opinion of her. She's a filly with a terrific turn of foot. Really, really excited about her prospects. Yeah, pretty bullish about her chances today. She comes off a good second in the Quisette last start um, and arguably could have been the winner. We think she'll take a power of beating. Philly like Leody, she's inexperienced, only a fourth time here today and can get quite fired up easily and the old saying where she can sort of run her race before she's out there. Horses can get themselves worked up and it's just an experience thing and it's just about sort of like Bella will do her best to keep her calm. The rider when he gets on will do his best to keep her calm um, and just, just trying to keep her as relaxed as possible behind the gates. Bit of barrier and a rise in distance just might have Leoti closer to the speed here today. Yeah, physically she's a lovely type. She walks out beautifully and cleanly. You can see her coat's in really good shape. It's got a lovely rich shine to it. I couldn't knock her. Probably the way I got into racing to start with was sitting on the back veranda with my grandfather and my dad and just listening to the transistor radio before the days of TVN or racing.com and I was following the races for, from the time I was eight years old. I was going to the races. I think the first race I ever went to was Boxing Day here at Caulfield. And um, obviously, being underage, I wasn't allowed to bet or anything. But um, my grandfather might have put a little trifecta on or something like that, and um, subsequently saluted. So that got my sort of interest in the sport. The one to beat, no doubt, is Leoti, trained by Henry Dwyer. Uh, how are the nerves? <laughs> a little bit nervous, to be honest. I don't normally get nervous, but. Um, yeah, feeling a little bit today. Well, you've been confident all week, and uh, that's been reflected in pre post betting. Even luck, you're just expecting she wins? Oh, I don't see how she can go backwards from her last run, and if she runs up to that, she should be winning, yeah. So, with even luck, yeah, she probably should win. Good luck, Henry. Punters are on your side. Thanks, Mick. Cheers. Sam Highland's behind the barriers. Uh, Sammy, you're just having a look at the uh, the fillies for the opening race. Are they nice and relaxed? Yeah, they've paraded okay. There's a little bit of wind about, Shane, uh, which can often uh, rev fillies up a little bit, but uh, the Odie is nice and bright and up on her toes. 
More naughty than usual, or...? Uh, no, she's probably about the same as last time, I'd say. She's probably better than last time. Better today, yeah. Was she? She's tossing her head about at the she's moment. pretty fresh. We haven't mm, done a heap of work yeah. with her, so... Something there for next time, too. Yes. We grew up around Caulfield. Um, I've come here since, yeah, since I was eight or nine. I wouldn't have missed meetings here as, an, as a kid, all through school I was coming to Caulfield race meetings and love having winners on, on my home track more than anywhere. Good luck, Jeff. All my mates come to the races here and um, for me to win any race here, let alone a good race, is good. Moves into the gates now for Chris Carter. Evidently right to go. Hosting a bell on the program over the 1400. Perfectly safe, a little white cap. They're off now. And just missing it a little bit was Sabrina, and she settles last of all of the early stages, and her stable mate is the first one out. So it's perfectly safe narrowly from Hot Dip second. Two lengths away, Leody, a lot closer to the speed today. She's third, and they're followed then by down on the inside in fourth is Smart, as you think. It's not a bad jump, yeah. perfectly safe, the leader. Bricks her ears, leads by about a length, go to the railway side from Hot Dip. Two and a half lengths away is the favourite, Leody. Inside the 800 metres, only about six lengths is covering them now. Have a bit strong now. Off the tempo, bit mid race, perfectly safe by half. Hot dip to the second on the outside, a length and a half away there. Here's Leone. Then followed along the right side by Smart. Coming around the turn, that's at 400 again. Leone now feels out the part of her runner, and a top dip down after Jimmy, perfectly safe. Leone is looking to be cruising on the outside of the challenge, and the hook to the outside now is to bring us down here closely. Yeah, she's got class, doesn't she? That was painless for favourite backers. It was a lovely ride, Gator from Chris Parnham, and she had a superior turn of foot. He has nice change up speed, wasn't it? I think um, she rolled back to the fence. She's still learning the caper, no doubt about it. Um, you know, and a couple of starts, in fact, their fourth career start onwards and upwards. Chris Parnham and Henry Probably a bit more impressive than that sort of look. She only won by a little bit. Yeah, thanks for that. Commiserations. Here is the jockey, Chris, with Sam. Chris, Leodie, uh, it's exactly what you wanted from her today. Yeah, she relaxed perfect, and um, she's got a lot of upside, this filly, and she's on a thousand guineas path, and she's still learning what it's all about. She still wanted to run in halfway down the straight, but um, I think once she puts it all together, she's going to be a serious horse. Well done, Chris. Shane is with Henry Dwyer. Thanks for that, Sam. Henry, congratulations. A, a filly certainly going places. Yeah, thanks, Shane. Um, it's a really smart filly. Probably today was the run we had to have to sort of get through 1,400 metres first time. To see when they back the tempo off, she was a little bit keen there and still got a bit to learn. And yeah, she, I think I think she was impressive enough. But if she had had some of chase, she would have been um, pretty special. Well done, Henry. Good start to the day. Thanks, Shane. Cheers. That was a fabulous ride. He got right off the rail as soon yeah, as he could. Whoop. Yep. Yeah. Yep. No, it was like the way you pulled her out of something. Yeah, as yeah. Well. Like just, yeah. He was just, just keeping her out. safe. Yeah. Kept her safe. Kept her safe. He's a good job, yeah. this boy, isn't he? Well done, Chris. Well done, Chris. Good on you. Good girl. Good girl. Yes, you are. That was fabulous. Right, right, mate. Yeah, fabulous. Yeah. She's, um, she's still learning, you know. Like that's only oh, yeah. Her fourth start. Yeah, yeah. She's still learning what it's all about. She wanted to run in slightly halfway down the straight. Oh, did she? Oh. That's just an that's just experience more than anything, I think. So yeah. She's just looking for that rail. Yeah. Uh, but she's a, she's a very classy horse. Well done. Henry. All right, we'll see what happens in the run of the rose, eh, later on. I'd like to say thank you very much to you, Henry. Thank you, I'm Jill. I'm so excited and so thrilled it's Thank you for buying her for me. <laughs> <laughs> and Chris was saying she's still green. The good thing about her is every time she's sort of stepping up and learning and by the time we get to the mile race, hopefully she's a fully-fledged yeah. horse. Well, 1,100 to 1,400. Mm. Yeah, good effort. Uh, a big step up, but it was, yeah. she, she did it well. And that's it, yeah, that's, that's it. That's it. All right, we're going downstairs. Okay. okay. Come on, we're going downstairs. Thank you. On behalf of the Melbourne Racing Club, I'd like to congratulate the, the horse Leoti and uh, a fine job by the trainer to uh, Henry to uh, get the horse through the perfectly run race on the Thanks, Des. Uh, in accepting the trophy on behalf of Rock Mount will, will be uh, Jeff and Jill. Um, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank the committee. Um, to Henry, what a great effort. Um, he's had wraps on this horse, which... I'm a terrific judge. <laughs> <laughs> 
that's uh, paid for the thousand guineas uh, might be on the radar. Thanks very much. Well done. You would have been happy with that. Relieved, Sammy, yeah. relieved. Yeah. <laughs> Got one more in race four, so we'll keep a lid on it for the time being. Yeah. <laughs> if you see me again in here, I'll be loose. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Thanks, Liz. Yeah. Congratulations. Thanks, mate. Yeah.